So a couple of videos ago, we solved the homogeneous equation for this differential equation. Um, and so we got to this part, and this is the complementary function. So now, on our right-hand side, I've got 52 sine 2x. So now I want to find a test function that will allow me to get my particular integral for that f of x. Now, what should our test function be? Well, because you've got trig on the right-hand side, it needs to be of the form a sine of 2x plus b cosine of 2x. Now, you might be wondering as to why you need both sine and cosine there. The 2x part you might feel is pretty obvious uh, because when I differentiate this down, the 2x stays the same, as you know, by the chain rule. So it makes sense that the 2x has to be there. The um, values at the front, the constants, have to be there as well, Okay, because we might have multiples thereof of sine 2x and cosine 2x. But why do we need both sine 2x and cosine 2x? The reason is that you need to cover all eventualities of how this is going to play out. Because, as you know from the two previous examples, we substitute in, so we're going to need dy by dx and d2y by dx squared. And as you differentiate these, sine is going to go to cosine. Cosine is going to go to minus sine, etc. So what happens is that you're going to get sum of sines and cosines. If you just used sine, so if you only had sine, then you would have sine here and sine there. That would be in terms of cosine. That would be in terms of sine. So you'd have this single term of cosine that you wouldn't be able to get rid of. So that means you need both terms to be differentiating and substituting in in order to, to allow for cancellations so that left-hand side you don't get a cosine, but on the right side you've just got a sine. So we're going to differentiate this. dy by dx is equal to 2a cosine of 2x. And here we'll have minus 2b sine of 2x. We need to differentiate again. So we're going to get minus 4a sine of 2x. Then from here, minus 4b cosine 2x. We now need to substitute those terms into the differential equation. So we have minus 4a sine of 2x take away 4b cosine 2x. Take away 5 lots of dy by dx. So take away 10a cosine 2x. I'm multiplying through as I go. Take away 5 lots of that, so plus 10b sine 2x. Then we've got plus 6 lots of y. So 6 lots of that, so plus 6 lots of a sine 2x plus 6 lots of b cosine 2x. And the right-hand side is 52 sine 2x. Right, OK. So let's simplify this down. Um, so on the left-hand side, I've got the minus 4a sine 2x and the 6a sine 2x. So that leaves me with 2a sine 2x. OK, so I'm going to factorise it as well. So I've got 2a of the sine 2x's. And the other sine 2x term is this one, which is 10b. So plus 10b sine 2x. As for the cosines, I've got the minus 4b cosine 2x and a 6b cosine 2x. So that'll be 2b cosine 2x left. So plus 2b. Let's write it this way around. And I've got the minus 10a there, so minus 10a plus the 2b cosine 2x. And that's got to be equal to the 52 sine 2x. So comparing coefficients, the value in front of the sine 2x on the left-hand side has got to be the same as the one on the right-hand side. So we have 2a plus 10b has got to be equal to 52. And minus 10a 
plus 2b. Well, there's no cosine 2 x's on the right-hand side, so that's got to be equal to 0. So we now have to solve these simultaneous equations. Okay, so I'm going to plug them into my calculator to do that. So menu, solve the simultaneous equations. So 2, 10, 52, minus 10, 2, 0. And we get 1 and 5. So A is equal to 1 and B is equal to 5. So these are the A and the B that go there. So we've got the y equals c1 e to the 3x plus c2 e to the 2x plus 1 lot of sine 2x plus 5 lots of cosine 2x. And so this is the general solution to my differential equation.